Hey guys, Monochrome here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Genuinely good to have you. Guys, I've got some bad news. It looks like COVID is going to be with us well into the new year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On top of that, there seems to be a new, tougher, stronger strain of COVID concentrated in the UK. Where I am in the US, in the city where I live in, we are currently experiencing infection rates just as high as they were back in April of 2020. Please keep in mind that COVID hit my city in March. That's right, so it seems people are taking unnecessary risks not quarantining themselves properly, not masking up like they should. And even more wonderful news to report, according to the national news media here in the US, a surprisingly large percentage of Americans decided to travel over the holiday season to be with their extended family. But I'm not here to talk about stupid, selfish, obnoxious, greedy people who act like being asked to mask up is the greatest violation of their civil rights ever. Not here to talk about those individuals. I'm here to talk about the new normal as it applies to one chain of well-known convenience stores. 7-Eleven. Let me just get this out of the way. I can't stand 7-Eleven. Quite frankly, they charge way too high a premium for the convenience of being able to shop 24-7, usually in stores that are small, sometimes dirty, and don't always have what you want. But credit where it's due, they they usually do have a lot of items that people do want especially at around 3 a.m. in the morning but okay so the new normal as it applies to 7-eleven yes I do shop there sometimes no I don't shop there on a regular basis I don't recommend you do either the prices they charge for being able to shop 24 hours a day, seven days a week are just ridiculous. But sometimes you have no choice, especially if you're someone like me and one of your two full-time jobs is at night, or if you work third shift like I do, yeah, no choice. You want something to eat, you need something for the house, 7-Eleven. So let's take a look at what 7-Eleven now offers in terms of PPE or personal protection equipment because yes the new normal means that even 7-Eleven has adjusted things a bit. Now what you see here are Wet Ones travel wipes usually available in 15 or 20 count and a small bottle of hand sanitizer. This one is two fluid ounces. Now these two items 7-Eleven has always had, at least the ones by my neck of the woods. They've always had these, but they've never been prominently featured up front where people can see them as soon as they walk in. Now they are, along with a few other items that we'll take a look at. So these are two items you can get at 7-Eleven. Obviously, you need hand sanitizer. Wet Ones Travel Wipes, these are fantastic. You can use these for your hands. You can use these for wiping down surfaces. The work desk at my third shift job. Before I get started, I always take one and I wipe down the desk. I'd like to say I can completely trust my fellow co-workers. Well, I'd like to say that. Let's just leave it at that. Okay, what else can you now get at 7-Eleven? 
All right. Well, you can also get a much bigger bottle of hand sanitizer. This is eight fluid ounces with a pump. Now, obviously, this is not for EDC purposes. This is something you keep in your work bag, the trunk of your car, or at home to refill your smaller bottle when this gets empty. So this is now also available at 7-Eleven. What else? Well, 70% isopropyl alcohol. Now, this particular shaped bottle with this particular label, I've seen one sold right next to it with a different label from apparently a different brand, but it's the exact same bottle in terms of size, color, um, how many fluid ounces it has. Literally, the only difference is the label. So you got two different brands using the very same label at 7-Eleven, but the important thing is right there, 70% isopropyl alcohol. So now you can get this at 7-Eleven. And of course, as with all of these other PPE items, expect to pay until your wallet screams in terror. Horribly overpriced, but available, available. Yeah. Until recently, I never used to see 70% isopropyl alcohol at 7-Eleven, not even in the cleaning aisle. Now, it's right up front with the rest of the PPE. Okay, so let's talk about masks. What do you have? Well, I've seen two different types. This is the first one. Yep, here's the packaging it comes in. Fashion mask, non-medical, with some sort of st sticker written in Chinese. Um, credit where it's due, the Chinese definitely know how to make a mask. Say what you will about them. In their culture, wearing masks when out in public is something they were doing long before COVID hit. So the Chinese definitely know how to make quality masks. Unfortunately, they also know how to make cheap garbage, and that's what this is. Fashion mask. Well, let's open this up because I can already tell through the little window that this is going to be garbage. Yep, it is. Look at how ridiculously thin this is with the integrated ear loops. Take a good look at this, stitching up the middle. If you ever see something like this, and this feels like thin silk. Obviously, it's not silk, but it feels like incredibly thin silk, and this is two layers. It's folded over, it's two layers, it feels like incredibly thin silk. If you know what that feels like, yeah. This is the integrated ear loops with, I mean, this is cheap garbage. I did order some masks several months back and I got them in the mail and this is what I received. This is garbage. You know what this is? This is like the helmet that's not a helmet for bikers who are really obnoxious and don't want to comply with helmet laws. So someone decided, hey, I'm going to make a worthless shell that's not a helmet. It won't protect your skull. I'm going to sell it and you can wear it as a protest on your head while you're riding and you'll be complying with the strict letter of the law while thumbing your nose at police officers. And every year some brand new individual who just bought a bike goes out, buys one of those helmets, doesn't realize it's a fake helmet, puts it on, gets into an accident and dies. It happens every year. So this is one of those masks that barely qualifies as a mask. This is ridiculously thin. Now, it will do the job of protecting others from your germs. 
this will do absolutely nothing in protecting you ridiculously thin that stitching I mean the stitching is decent credit where it's due but this mask is something that I would classify as one of those bike helmets that's not a bike helmet but a middle finger to the helmet laws this this barely qualifies as a mask. If you're one of those individuals who thinks that wearing a mask is a violation of your civil rights every time you go to the supermarket, this is the mask for you. Put it on, gives you zero protection, but at least it protects others from your germs to a degree. This thing is ridiculously thin. This is... For people who take the pandemic seriously and want a real mask, this is something you want to avoid. And it's not just in the camo color. This thing comes in a variety of colors, but very same material. It's garbage. Uh, you can, however, hand wash it and wear it again. Again, this is for individuals who think that mask regulations are a violation of their civil rights and they want to thumb their noses at decent human beings who actually take the pandemic seriously go get you one of these at least it'll protect people from your germs to a certain extent but yeah for everyone else i say avoid it here's the only other type of mask you can get at 7-eleven this comes in a 10 pack it's in the shape of a surgical style mask variety of different colors this one happens to be blue and yeah disposable face mask non-medical so this is like a surgical mask only not quite as good yeah let's take a look inside you do get a 10 packs so that's good at least And I'm actually opening this up for the very first time myself. All right, that's the inside of the mask. And wow, this thing is a pain in the butt to put back into the packaging. So here's the inside of the mask. Here's the outside. Okay, this material here, I'm familiar with this. This is some sort of filter material, but it's single layer. With a surgical mask, all of the layers in an actual surgical mask are filter material. Um, front, back, middle. And obviously there's three of them. This is also filter material, but this is like one layer and there seems to be a second layer here. So this is actually a lot better than this garbage. So this is actually a lot better. It's disposable so you can't wash it, but you get 10 in a package. Honestly, you could do worse, especially if you buy the other mask sold at 7-Eleven, but this is quite, this is quite good. This is filter material here. And on the back, you have some filter material. Now, an actual surgical mask will be three layers, front, back, and middle. This one seems to be missing the middle layer, but it's still decent protection from your germs being exhaled towards others, and it should offer you a bit of protection as well. There is a nose wire. I can feel it here. So that's good. Uh, I would recommend a real surgical mask over one of these, but this is decent. This is decent. This will protect others from your germs. It should give you a little bit of protection as the wearer. Good elastic ear loops. You can definitely shape this to your face and there is a nose wire so this is decent this I recommend the other type I don't 
Okay, guys, that's everything you can get at 7-Eleven in terms of PPE. If you need it, just realize you're going to pay a premium for all of these items. But that's what you can find at 7-Eleven. Hope you guys like this video. I'll see you in the next one. Please continue to stay safe because unfortunately it's still dangerous out there.